Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I am your host, Lance White. Tonight, I'm happy to have back my guest, Andrew Fitter. Andrew is the author of two books, When the Angels Have Risen, and its sequel, The Heretic. Presently, he hosts a weekly radio show every other week here at BBS on Fridays at 11 a.m. called When Pigs Fly. So let's welcome Andrew back to the show now. How are you, Andrew? Doing great, and thanks for having me on your show. Oh, well, I'm, I'm happy to have you. We had fun chatting the last time, so God only knows where it'll take us this time. But uh, in the, you, since then, you've written another, uh, another book. Yes, uh, yeah, I had my sequel, The Heretic, come out uh, officially as of last uh, December. Ah, and uh, how did you, uh, how's it doing? Actually, it's doing uh, quite good. Um, <laughs> it's uh, kicked off a couple um, book signing events, and then every oh, one cool. I've had so far have been complete sellouts. Wow. And You'll uh, have to give me some tips off the air. <laughs> <laughs> to get my own book going. <laughs> um, where did you get the inspiration for this? Uh, well, let's, first of all, let's let's just say, why don't you give us a brief, I'm just uh, curious, the first book was more in contemporary times, almost futuristic. Um, then you went back to the times of Alexander the Great. What was your inspiration for that? Well, um, there was about, in uh, my first book, the When the Angels Have Risen, there's like a, a year I don't talk about. Uh-huh. And um, I definitely wanted to incorporate the idea, two ideas, uh, or actually three ideas, to incorporate within my ne- within the heretic. One was the idea of understanding of regression and past lives. Oh yeah. And I wanted to, and how they relate to us now. And also, I wanted to relate to concepts that we have in today's times and how what we think are. Uh, more moral, or maybe just cultural, uh-huh. and also want to incorporate also the the structure of uh, uh, spiritualism in a reverse and take into a new dynamics. Now, when uh, and then I was also wanting to um, I was always fascinated by uh, history. That's like my for- I love reading about history since I was a little kid. Oh, okay. And Alexander the Great uh, was one person that has affected as far as west the western hemisphere so much yet very little has you know they've talked about his campaigns and whatnot so i decided to do a in-depth research and bring a character my character back during that time mm. and so when i did it uh... i took about a year's research uh, i looked through all his campaigns uh... the areas obviously during that time from crete uh... which is in my book uh, uh, egypt greece asia minor Ju- uh, judea israel um, syria lebanon and persia so i had to look at through that times but the hardest thing was looking into his persona how you know it was very little um, about him as a person mm. and that took the them and that's why i wanted to bring out to find out what what was his mentality Mm-hmm. And the same token, I uh, brought out I.S. into the book, which is the main character, who is mm-hmm. the reincarnate, I mean, not the reincarnate, the, um, the past life of uh, Jerry Fletcher. Mm-hmm. And that's through his regression. He finds himself back when during the time of Alexander the Great. Cool. Well, there's, there's a lot of people doing regression therapy now, and uh, it's fascinating to find out what comes out about it. They're, they're going into past lives and... Some people have actually been uh, conscious in a robotic body. Some have been a leaf, a bug, and all kinds of interesting things. Uh, Dolores Cannon writes some books about that, her convoluted uh, universe series, and they're, it's just fascinating, you know. And, and then other people are doing uh, regression into the in between time, you know, not only the near death experience where you go back to where you came from, but the time before you incarnate. So we're kind of piecing together a little bit of the picture of what might be uh, the way some things work on the other side of, of uh, life, you know, where maybe that's a more real side of life than this one. What do you think? Well, what I did, actually, in my book, there's those there's three lives that are actually, because I, I always incorporate, I always 
put something of myself within the book. Oh yeah, well I hope. So. And the, there's the three, the past lives are actually my past, the three of past lives that I am aware of. Oh, one cool. of the three past lives, and also the regression that is in there is actually a regression um, that has been performed on me, and that I also I do as well. In fact, I have sort of funny. Um, I haven't done any regressions in a long time, and since my books come out, everybody has come out of woodwork asking me to do a regression on them. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> Which, you know, I'm going to probably start doing down the line. And, um, you know, and it's true what you're talking about. I, I tend to hold back on wanting people to go uh, regression because I make them aware. I don't want them to get too caught up in past lives when they need to experience their present life, and that's what a lot yeah. of people don't realize. The only issue to know understanding your past life and like what you're talking through the in between areas because uh -huh. then you um, then which is a whole nother concept um, is to relate to why you know things are that you've picked up have brought into this life that may or comic events that you may not understand why you're at this situation why you're facing certain challenges in this particular life yeah yeah absolutely so that was the important thing. That's actually why I pulled this you'll, in my book, in the heritage. You'll see there is a, a comp complementary effect between IS and why he is the way he is mm -hmm. then in, in the book, and then uh, Jerry Fletcher. And it's also reciprocated because if you read um, the, the Heretic, it's made so you can read either one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you read the Heretic, you can always go back and read when the angels are risen and go, okay, now I see how this guy is now, then and from this thing. And then you go read the other book, you go, oh, okay, or vice versa. Uh -huh. But it's very interesting that you brought that up about going through regressions because basically it's um, when you're doing a regression, and I, I sort of funny because I brought this up in one of my own past shows. Um, <laughs> it's basically you're uh, bringing it because you're bending what they call the the, the quantum area of a, a time element, uh -huh. and you're experiencing um, in a different uh, uh, man, uh, area um, on different planes in a more of a quantum. I know if you understand, you know we need, it's like the old. Uh, like on this plane where we see things, we see things in a three-dimensional plane as far as space and as far as time is linear. Uh -huh. But if you go into the antimatter and that's going fast speed of light or you bend to the other side, that's when you're at um, three-dimensional time and one-dimensional space. Uh -huh. And so when you bend that, then you see the other reality, and that's what the reality of your spiritual side, that's the side that you don't see, that's the side that asks of the reality. You'll find the infinite time element, infinite space, infinite things, and you find a different dimension. And when people go through regressions, when they find themselves, you're talking about um, like a leaf or something else, mm -hmm. you're actually, I believe, you're connecting with your oversouls because I believe we're, we mm -hmm. have so many oversouls that's connecting to so many elements and so many experiences because we're all pretty much one mm -hmm. that you're bringing in all these other experiences that you've had not in one particular past life but many mm -hmm. uh, infinite past lives mm -hmm. yeah stars. that's yeah I, I totally agree with you on that one and uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing we should talk a little bit about the veil of forgetfulness that we all seem to agree to go under when we come here because um, we forget who we forget that we came from this realm for a reason and possibly one of the reasons is that it would be overwhelming uh, if we were to know about our other lives or our other concurrent lives, because theoretically they're all occurring at the same time, right? Right. And I, it's like a, there's a famous guy, this is a famous Kabbalistic rabbi, one time told me an old story. It said, and it's sort of like, when we're on the other side, mm -hmm. before we reincarnate, we have all knowingness of everything around us. Mm hmm and when we, the minute that we are placed into our embodiment, an angel hits us on top of the lip to wake up, hmm. and then you know a little denim up or on upper of a lip, uh. when we wake up, that's hmm. when we, that's the veil, uh. and it's for our own protection. It's so that if you knew, it, let's like if you knew all the future, yeah, you would be too lazy to experience the present. Oh yeah, absolutely. And also, don't you think, uh, I've had guests, uh, quite a few guests that have had near-death experiences, and they, they describe absolutely beautiful realms of, you know, they're, very, they're, they're beyond heavenly. I mean, clearly, 
there's there are realms beyond this one that are just so awesome that in different colors that you can't describe that it's all beyond words and if we were to be aware of that in this lower dense uh, <laughs> thick uh, crusty dimension uh, don't you think people would want to get out of here fast <laughs> Uh, yes and no. I think no? it's a. I think it's a, a, a being into this uh, um, embodiment needs to be embraced on one side as well as on oh, the yeah. spiritual side. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and I think that um, the the problem is when people become in this own embodiment, they I think from a, a childlike they are are connected and then they're they're um, ma- manufactured ideas and uh, and being oppressed. By whether it's their children, by their parents or clerics mm-hmm. or society, telling them, you know, thinking it, it, uh, more on a finite basis. Mm-hmm. So when they look at things finite, they can't uh, identify to their own real spirit because mm-hmm. spirit is infinite. So and they're, you know, and it's also within their own, um, especially the the Christian 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 religion is very finite. So they look at things very finite, like so the things. They cannot relate to their spiritual side as being something ultrally connected, where we're all connected. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's like um, uh, it, it's where like some in a lot of organized religions they lose their real fundamentals. Like even in Islam, the real Islam is if we're all uh, Allah as everything, mm-hmm. then we're all connected. So mm-hmm. if you turn to someone who says he's a Muslim and he believes in Allah and he hates his the right arm hates his left arm, let's mm-hmm. say a Jew or a Christian or a Buddhist or Hindu, then you're really hating Allah because that's mm-hmm. part of you. Mm-hmm. And then you got to realize that we are all connected. And when you're, what you're talking about, which is absolute fundamental, that if everybody reached out and really realized the spiritual side and the connectedness, how we're all basically a tree mm-hmm. and we're all different leaves connected to that tree, then we would realize it's sort of, um, not to sound uh, Carlos Mencia, but it's sort of retarded to, <laughs> yeah, uh, to uh, you know, to hate one another, to want to kill, to subjugate somebody else's, uh, your ideas on them. And exactly. It's foolish. It's like, uh, well, it's like a family arguing with each other, you know, except that we're all over the world. And, you know, and there, there's death involved and torture and, and subjugation and greed and corruption and, and uh, it seems to be pretty rampant now, don't you think? Yeah, uh, well, it, uh, it's basically, uh, I believe, a, the falsehood of feeling like they're in control, mm. feeling on, like an empower, they're, so it's the, 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 the illusionary idea of being in control. Yeah, there's like. Yeah. You know, and he, I mean, you've heard like the Bilderbergs and the, the conspiracies and those things. You hear yeah. of all the different factions of people consistently trying to control, including economics. Yeah. In fact, even energy today, we have the ability to have free energy. We've had it even since uh, Tesla invented it. And possibly but even it, before. Yeah, but um, and we have, but that's all about because they need a meter, it, and it's not to just make money. Money is an economics to control people. Yeah, I, and, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, it, I've been reading a lot about how free energy has been uh, suppressed and that a lot of devices have been purchased by the major companies. No names will be mentioned <laughs> to anybody visiting at my door. But um, they simply shelved these things. And one of the interesting stories was about uh, someone who worked for one of the car companies and apparently... Uh, the guys who were designing these engines were having fun trying to see how many gal- miles per gallon they could get out of their test vehicles. And they <clears throat> one got 100 miles per gallon, and then another one got 150. Well, you don't hear about that, and you never have. And, in fact, the mileage has gone from, you know, 40 miles a gallon to, what, 26 now? It's yeah. just amazing. We're, and cars, instead of becoming more streamlined, I remember when I was a kid, the Thunderbird was coming out. It looked like a bullet. And, and then over the years, they're getting boxier and boxier. Well, there's more drag there, more more gas to fill into the car. And the SUVs are heavier. So we're actually going backwards. Yeah, it, and, it's, it, and, we're, and, and it's worldwide. It's not just uh, 
It's um, but when you're t- but uh, when I talk about free energy, um, I don't know if you're no- you're familiar with Nikola Tesla. Yes. Well, he he was uh, hired um, back back in the late 1800s by uh, um, J R uh, by uh, J excuse me J P Morgan, mm-hmm. and he developed a device. He actually basically stick it in the ground. I'm trying to remember that what the, the the name of it, and uh, it gave free energy. And it was wireless free energy. Yeah. They throw electricity yeah. out. And J.P. Morgan was freaked out by it because there's no way to put a meter on it so you can charge people. Mm-hmm. And Tesla, all he cared about was trying to help humanity. And they ran out, sabotaged, tried, took his device, trying to get burned up his papers. But there is those still the, the knowledge and the ability to create that. And just imagine if we had free energy and you stuck a device into the ground and it get because it's talking about electrical magnetic energy Mm because it's all out there, Mm -hmm. then the economics in the world would totally be there would not be um, it'd be there wouldn't be money. I mean, because come on, if you had free energy, Mm -hmm. uh, food would be plentiful, clothes Mm -hmm. would be plentiful. We'd become like that Star Trek area, you know, where they. I don't know, it sounds nerdy or Star trek but they go, hey, you remember when the, back in the 200, back in the late 1900s and in the 20, 2000 and 2100, yeah. they had that thing called money, you know? <laughs> you know? And it, it, it would, we would evolve, like, yeah. overnight. I think, I think you're absolutely right, and I think we're on the verge. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been silenced, too, or bought out. You know, they've been paid millions of dollars for their devices, and then they sit on shelves. And, and I, I've uh, known of a few people that have been uh, had mysterious deaths. So there's no question in my mind that there's a stranglehold here, and that if enough, when the energy shifts, people will start coming out with it all over the place, and they won't be able to suppress it. And it'll be like a transformation, I think. And um, you do some research into 2012 and the, the prophecies about that, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. I think that we're headed for uh, some major shifts, and I think that it will happen so quickly that it's, uh, you know, I don't know how it will happen, but what are some of your thoughts on that subject? Well, it's funny you say you saw that, because actually I saw David Wilcock when he was out here on the, the UFO conference in Laughlin. Uh-huh. And um, I was sort of blown away. I guess it was sort of meant to be to hear him because it was sort of by I was going there to be go on a radio show, I was being interviewed, uh-huh. and uh, I saw oh, while I'm there, I'm going to go see a couple speakers, right? And so yeah. for some reason, I heard his name, and I didn't know who he was, and I just wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, it was quite fascinating. But uh, later on, I he hit on some major things like right on the nose uh-huh. um, regarding the the truth about global warming about 2010 and 2012 mm-hmm. and how the tertiary effect of our planets and the tertiary effect on our DNA and how um, in a physics scientific terms is is also our spiritual terms is coming to a head and mm-hmm. why we have so many UFOs coming all coming open oh by the way I don't know if you heard about the, like the UK uh, now opened up its archives for all their uh, classified material regarding extraterrestrials and UFOs. Yes, that was quite a nice step, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and but see, all this stuff is coming to effect. And we're in. Tw- he said in 2010, he thought that we we're going to hit a bump. And I had a funny. I've always felt we we're going to hit a bump like this. Something almost like hit our heads, or something happening in the realm that mm-hmm. we're going to get hit like. A split. Like, it's almost like the world is splitting up. People have become extremely clairvoyant, uh-huh. and there's not going to be one or two people who are psychic. It's going to be a massive amount of people becoming more clairvoyant and more uh-huh. intuitive and more into their spiritual side, and the other side reaching for the old um, the way, the old change. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, you see it even the dynamics. I mean, even politically, uh, I'm not going to get into the thing with uh, Barack Obama, but. That is a, uh, a symptom of the causation that's causing coming within the United States. People looking for change. Right. It is a vir- desire to, uh, you know, for a new and um, a, a non-narcissistical approach toward things. Mm-hmm. And it's changing. And I think we're going to have a big bump in the 2010, and then in 2012, 
you know, I, I, I look at people call it the year, the, the, the end of the world, you know, as the Mayans call it, but I call it the, actually the new beginnings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's how I feel it, uh, it's heading. And that's actually why I wrote the When the Angels Have Risen, to tell you the truth. I wrote that as a book to keep give people self-confidence, to give them their self-worth, and knowing that there is going to be, um, uh, we will become, uh, to get, we will have the meetings with the extraterrestrials, and it's all uh, sort of intermixed with uh, both our spirituality mm -hmm. and our politics as well. I think this is all going to collide together, and it's going to open doors. There's people who are going to be really freaked out and fearful of the new things that are going to happen because it's going to, you know, hit them in the face that what you were told was a lie, mm -hmm. that the religions <laughs> that you were, your clerics have told you, a mm -hmm. lie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people, I hate to say, are going to either do something drastic, God forbid, commit suicide or do something else. And then there's the other side where people will be embracing it. So people do have choices oh, when it comes to that. But, you know, you, this is such a good topic to talk about because, you know, we're right at the, the moment, you know, whether it takes a year or two years or four years uh, for these shifts to occur. But, um, the exopolitics movement, for instance, ties into this, and apparently there's quite a bit of evidence that that shows that uh, the major governments have been conducting ex uh, agreements with various ET races, and this has been going on for 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 years. And, uh, you know, we've been kept in the dark, so it's conceivable that the lid will come off either through the through the benevolent ETs that are trying to help us, and I do believe that's, that's occurring. And uh, for those who want to find out more about that, continue to listen to the show After Mine with Jim Gilliland, who talks about this in, in, uh, with heart and with uh, depth. And uh, He has that ranch up in uh, Washington where the ships uh, fly by all the time. So Yeah, I was on his, I was on his show last year. And it was sort of a flip talk about interview. I was actually interviewing him because he was telling me, yeah, I got a ship flying right while we're talking now. Come on. He should, while well, we're talking, next thing I know after the, we close the interview, he emails me a video of it, and I see the tagline. Uh -huh. And I go, holy hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he's, he, is, he is so for real. And, uh, and he's so uh, positive and so heartfelt about it. And uh, it's a difficult cross to bear because, you know, you have the skeptics on one side and you've got people tearing you apart. And then you've got uh, people who are trying to destroy your reputation. So it's really, it's a difficult time. I just saw a great movie. Have you seen The Phoenix Lights uh, that was made by that doctor? I can't remember her name. She's going to be on the show one of these days. Uh, but it just came out on video. It's called The Phoenix Lights. Uh, no, I, uh, The Phoenix Lights? Mm-hmm. I've heard of it. But... In 1997, there were uh, sightings in Phoenix. Art Bell used to talk about this on his show a lot. Isn't that the where the, the I'm trying to remember that, um, so the governor or something like that? He, yeah. I think he would, they had it on Larry King where originally he, he didn't want to, he was talking down about it and then uh -huh. he acknowledged it and they had a whole bunch of witnesses on Larry King uh -huh. and they went into the very thing of what those lights were and it looked like a big huge like mothership flying across the Phoenix area. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this movie that, uh, I think it's Dr. Keitel, anyway, it's, um, it's really done well. And apparently, over 10,000 people saw these lights or the ship or whatever it, whatever it is. And they have such an intelligent discussion about it. It's not, uh, it's not, there's no argumenting, arguing. There's, it's just presenting information and people just share what they saw. And uh, one of the gals on the, in the pol political board, I wanted to find out how to handle all these phone calls because they were getting thousands of calls, and they just they just ignored her like you know she didn't exist. And so she pressed it, and it became quite an issue there. So it's a, it's a really good movie, and they have some wonderful video that they've captured too. And it's it's done very professionally and very uplifting. So uh, you know I think that we're getting very close to some kind of disclosure. Um, 
with the exopolitics movement, it seems that uh, you know either either it's going to come out or it's going to be forced out of the out of the closet. You well, know, that's sort of like what you're talking about. I've heard where there's going to be peels and layers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like on CNN, when the thing happened in um, Chicago uh, with that area that incident and all those people, and then it was on CNN, and then they had the incident in Stephenville, Texas. I think was that last year. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or not long ago, actually. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, of course, they tried to uh, the Air Force tried to, you know, make the people like they were didn't know what they were talking about. As usual. <laughs> yeah, it came out. And first of all, he said, "Oh, we had no flights in the area," and the next thing you know, oh no, we had we we're sending off balloons. Right. Or, or F right. whatever. They had some jets flying out there, and then they had right. people come out and says, "No, there was no jets flying out there," you know, and. But um, it, you're you're right. I think it's becoming more. Uh, I think actually all around the world has become more acceptable to it and more yeah. opening to it. Yeah. And I think the reason there, this country is apprehensive, is all starts with the Brook Institute. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think that also has to do in the Brooking Institute, which is in the fifties. Oh my God! Goes, I hate them. Yeah. And well, that it goes back. That ridiculous report. Well, this goes back to, and I hate to go back on conspiracies, but this happens to go back with the Bilderbergs, because the Bilderbergs are involved with the uh, oh, yeah. Institute. They're so, going to be meeting pretty soon, too, apparently. They've got another meeting coming up somewhere. Yeah, and I, and I think they're getting forced upon, uh, like you're saying, and I think uh, one way or the other, you know... Like it's, it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out with... See, they remind me, I remember I used to argue, uh, have arguments with a couple other people uh, who... Uh, uh, like Don, <laughs> but because um, there are a lot of people worried about them and control. But I always say, like, it reminds me of the book by Kurt Vonnegut, Sirens of Titan, uh -huh. and that's where people who think they're in control or they themselves, you know, are Absolutely. being controlled. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's an illusion. And yeah. like, you know, and I, I think like uh, they may have been in contract with. Uh, ETs, mm -hmm. who they think they're getting something out, but there might be. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the ETs that are involved with them are mm -hmm. pretty aware of what their mindset is. Oh yeah, and so they're a step ahead and leading them on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And meantime, what they're doing is trying to open the door. I believe for an enlightenment because I believe there were two basically. Uh, and this I bring out my the first book when the angels have risen. I believe there are two. Actual extraterrestrial um, uh, in, in influences on our our plane. No. When it was positive, when it was negative, and I believe in the last couple hundred years or so, it's been it's been the dark side has basically been forced out, and the light side has come in. Yeah. And they really came in. To, if you almost to almost uh, you can draw a line when it all happened, and they say, hey, enough is enough is when. We let off our first nuclear uh, weapon. And yeah, I yeah, think that's that, right. But yeah, what but, year was that? Uh, when we lit it up when uh, during the war, yeah. and then right before that, they even there was acknowledgement. Bef right before that, with the Foo Fighters. That's right. That's going right. Going through England when they're doing their own tests. That's right. So, but I think that the whole realm of that thing happening was. Um, and this gets in another area. Um, when you let, let off a nuclear weapon, it affects uh, the electrical magnetic fields, mm. which affects, now this gets in quantum, but it affects the um, stargate openings. And that's how people, they're able to go from millions of miles away. They basically flip open. You know, you can't really physically go past the speed of light, so what they do is they bend it. Right. And, like, that's how they propel themselves. You know, you can't really... So anyway, not to get so scientific here, but that, but that, I think affected it so much. They go, hey, wait a second, now you're screwing with our, <laughs> right, our, right. our realm here, okay? Into our you guys do not dimension. know what that. You're like little kids playing with a toy. And now yeah. you're screwing with us now, and I think that's where uh, you know it happened. And I've read and seen and had read reports and and listened to witnesses. I even put them on my blog site of. Um, Witnesses uh, at a like for example at a, a military base where they have missiles, nuclear warheads, and out of nowhere uh, 
a UFO appears right in front of them. They try shooting at it, nothing happens. Hmm. And out of nowhere, because they thought it was like something from the Soviets, because it was during the Soviet, uh, oh, okay. d- during the Cold War. And out of nowhere, all the missile heads are uh, deactivated. Like yes, they're, they're, I've heard that. Yeah, and, over and, over. and they can't report it. Right, because <laughs> yeah. it can't tell. Hey, by the way, right. uh, hey Soviets, we don't have any nukes, or our work, nukes aren't working. Come on, you know. <laughs> I'm sure the back channels get the information around. You know, yeah. we're but we're the last to get any accurate, truthful information. Unfortunately, we become the enemy. Yeah, you know, we have become the enemy. It's it's like uh, these people that are that seem to think that they're in control seem to have a great deal of contempt for us. And, you know, that's really sad because, uh, you know, like you said, as we start to shift in the two directions, kind of like the Hopi prophecy show that one direction leads off the cliff and the other one leads to some kind of unknown enlightened. uh, Right, that's our choice. Yeah, exactly. And I think that the people like you and our listeners and Don and the rest uh, and the light workers around the world, uh, and those who don't realize that they're doing light work, uh, are going to uh, their hearts are opening, and we're connecting at the heart level, and that you're, we're going to be telepathic, just like you said, and that will be our form of communication. And those who resist, who want to control or think that they can control this, are going to slowly be squeezed out or left out unless they change, and that's going to be very rough for those people. Yeah, that's exactly. In fact, that's funny that you said that. That's exactly, or ironically, what uh, um, David Wilcock had, had uh, proposed on his uh, his his ideas, and I, I very much concur with you what you're saying. That's I mean, what I think yeah. is happening. Yeah, it's it's the it seems like the only direction the spiritual spirituality can evolve because once you eliminate duality and there are no enemies any longer then we're here to help each other, and there's a spirit of cooperation. Now, uh, what will that do to the military-industrial complex? That is why there's so much resistance now. Yeah. Because that, those people will be out of a job. And, All of them. And, and if you know there's a... And they don't, uh, you don't, they, don't, they don't talk about it, but there's actually a lot of... In fact, I posted it one time on my site. Um, they had some ET um, flying over Israel. Uh-huh. And this is on BBC. They didn't, they're giving, uh, talking to, like, a, this is when the Israelis knocked out that Syrian nuclear facility. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they're talking to them, and then right flying behind, uh, this is during a military training by the Israelis, they didn't even see it. There's an ET flying right behind the Israeli jet fighter. Wow, that's great. I yeah, love it. And, love which it. I thought was pretty fascinating. And wow. then they've had cool. instances in Jerusalem. And then what's really bizarre is, um, and it's been reported in Indian news, um, but I don't know why it's not proposed. Well, I know why it's not proposed. Tell, you know, come no, out to the Western. <laughs> but uh, there's been a lot of uh, ETs uh, in the Iranian area. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, and they first start shooting them thinking they were Americans, but they didn't realize they're ETs. Yeah. Have you heard the the rumor that uh that uh, our mil- you know, our mil- we know that our military has back engineered quite a few advanced systems and that they have technology that's hundreds of years ahead of anything that we have. Um I I've, I've heard the rumor that they have a particle beam weapon that they have actually used to shoot down a couple of saucers. And they're they're using those to back engineer as well. I mean, there's no way you can verify these things, but it certainly seems like something they would do. And and you were talking about the uh, heating up the uh, ionosphere. Well, that isn't that what HARP does? Yeah, they were trying to do uh, utilize different um, uh, eff- effects affecting um, the electrical magnetic fields mm-hmm. that would affect, uh, you know, UFOs, but mm-hmm. um, what they found, what, the, the, what I've heard and read is that they've had problems um, dealing even as much as technology they we have here, mm-hmm. they can't even relate to, <laughs> because they're already going in, they're already, they're too far ahead as far as going into a lot of the antimatter things, so they can't even deal with it. Like mm-hmm. in that instant, they can be on the other side and then reverse itself. And that's why they appear and they disappear. And as much as they think 
on this timeline and they think they can shoot a particle beam and do something like that. Mm. The problem is, is it's like they can they can go into another um, what they call a subspace mm. if you want to get into that, and that's what I think. That w- their problem is, is you know, whatever ac- reaction, there's always a reaction. Oh, absolutely. And so, butterfly effect. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, they're, you know, they're trying to do. There's, I've read and I've seen a lot of how uh, the, the militaries always try to do what they call it a reverse engineering. Try yeah, to get yeah. something they devise. They try it with the Montauk chair, <laughs> which was actually highly successful. What yeah. they did, and um, and they weaponize literally everything. I mean now. Uh, food has been weaponized, water has been weaponized, mm-hmm. bacteria, everything, even the air. Look at the chemtrails that are now worldwide. Uh, are you familiar with the chemtrails? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they trying to... are everywhere, and they, that's been going on for at least 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And nobody... I mean, it's like you would think that, that, that uh, humans that are trying to breathe would look up and wonder what that was, and when they found out, they'd be outraged. But it's it just it never hits the mainstream media. Yeah, it's like it's not. Why is it is it a coincidence? That there's so much cancer. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank and, you. And why is it one third of how many kids now are diabetic? One of the healers kids. in my group had a three year old child that came down with brain cancer. She had to go through over a year of chemotherapy. Now that's a kid. That's that's just unusual. That's yeah. just. You know those they, cases, and the the lung ca- the cases of lung problems is just astronomical. Yeah. So you know I don't know what's in those things or what they're for, but some people, I mean, there's theories abounding about everything. So I mean, until we actually know, and people you know come out and force uh, force the government to to admit to what's going on. Of course they they spin everything. <laughs> you know. It's like they're so used to lying and manipulating that, uh, you know, if, if, if people see UFOs, they say those are balloons, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and same thing with the chemtrails. I can just hear it coming out now. Well, those are contrails. And it just goes on and on and on. Well, that started even back in the days when, uh, I don't know if you remember, because I, I was living in L, grew up in L.A. Oh, um, golly. And they were doing, uh, they said, oh, my God, we have the med fly. Uh, and, and they were spraying it with, um, what was it, not, uh, not parathion, no, malathion, mm. which I know because I was a farmer in malathion. You don't want to spray that on pee around people. <laughs> no. I mean, if we used to, when I used to have grapes, so we screw grapes, when we used to spray marathon and uh, parathion, you basically look like you're wearing a spaceman suit yeah, when you walk yeah. it. And here they're flying over people's houses and spraying that stuff. I was like, what? <laughs> uh-huh. I love it. I love it. For the med fly. Oh, <laughs> that was like almost non-existent. And I've always wondered if it was really the med fly or they're just really trying to test the reaction or something on people. It would not be. It would not surprise me in the least. They have a long history. If you, if you go on the Internet and start digging around... There's just case after case that's been documented that you know that goes back in time to the very beginning uh, that shows that they're they've been experimenting on us since the beginning of time and and that we're just like lab rats, you know. So, but all of this ties into the spiritual awakening that I think that we're involved with. It's going to force us to, at a certain point, there will be that hundredth monkey effect, and. I think that people will just instantly, there will be like an instant when we just know. We know the truth. I mean, don't you feel, when you look at the news or the, the Internet, don't you get a gut feeling about what's truthful and what's not truthful? Oh, you, you have a, a yeah, inclination, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and you can tell almost immediately when something, when, when a politician or a story is not true. And uh, unfortunately, that's most of them, but... Um, but uh, there's a truthometer, and you know, and it and it starts in our hearts. And you know, people who have hardened their hearts with no conscience are not going to be able to pick that up. That's why I think that they're living. They're in a different world. You know, and there's, that's where there's two. Basically, there's um, people are becoming separated. Yeah, 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 yeah very much so. Because I mean, I've talked to people around me and. There's some people who amaze me who are totally aware of it yeah. that you would not think of it. I mean, yeah. people who are like, 
working nine to five yeah, and they're totally yeah. aware of it. And then people who you think are most educated yeah. don't even have a clue. Yeah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> and I was looking at them like, you know, and there are managers or companies and stuff. Yeah. And they don't even get it. And like, I mean, I'll give you an example. I, I, I think they got this one friend, of this, he's a, actually a friend of mine, uh -huh. and he was blown away. You know, he's all into whether it's a Clinton or Obama or whether it's, there's a McCain. And I said, do you want to know something? If you go and, and go on Wikipedia and click on Old Bilderbergs, <laughs> go open another page, click on um, the Trilateral Commission, uh -huh. click on the Council of Foreign Affairs. Uh -huh. It shows how they were developed, who developed them. Then list on who meets there. Then look on what the World Trade Organization is, uh -huh. the World Bank Organization is. Uh -huh. You'll find out how first there was actually a split of the Bilderbergs um, and that was back in the turn of century, and why there was the not who how who started the Nazis, oh, you know, yeah. and who the J.P. Morgans and all that stuff. And if you read who the players are now, like, I mean, you they were surprised when they saw neocons such as the says such as the uh, Wolfowitz and mm -hmm. and Cheney and the Bushes mm -hmm. together with Edwards. The Carters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and so on and so. And then I said to him, you want us to look at something real interesting? Now look up the name Zeb Brzezinski, who's head of the Trilateral Commission. The day he became the, tri the foreign, foreign advisor for Barack Obama uh -huh. was in October. And in October, out of nowhere, suddenly Barack Obama has all his campaign funds. Yep. And then look who's committee. on his, the committee for the foreign affairs. Mm, yeah. Carolyn yes. Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then look on Carter. And then you'll find also Bush. And you'll find they're all. And Bush's the, grandparents, the grandfather that was uh, supplying uh, arms to the Nazis. Well. I mean, you know, it just goes on and on. And it's the Rockefellers. And the Rockefellers, Standard Oil supplied the chemicals and. To both sides. Well, that was a split. That was because they were trying to... It, the Bilderbergs got split at that moment. Right. And there was a fight between the, Rock, the, the Rothschilds and the European Bilderbergs again, and, and the, the J.P. Morgan, who was on the American side, they were trying to take down the Rothschilds. And they, they were trying to use the Nazis to do it, and it backfired. <laughs> and then afterward, they regrouped, and that's when they started the... That's when they... Regrouped and started a 1947 conference in the in Netherlands, which the official Bilderberg thing started, and then that changed everything. You know, I was just talking with uh, Fred Burks last week, who was on the show. He has a site called uh, Want to Know dot info, I think it is. Anyway, he worked in the White House for as a translator with some of the presidents. <clears throat> he mentioned the Bilderbergs too, and the funny thing is, when I was a little kid. I was just, you know, probably four, five, six, seven, eight years old. My dad used to talk about the Bilderbergs all the time. And uh, my parents would have a few cocktails, and they'd get into a philosophical discussion with their friends. And, and he used to, I remember him saying, well, the Bilderbergs own everything. You should know that. And over the years, he, I mean, he introduced me to that, and that was probably in 1955. So, uh, you know... Hey. I, I bet you, if I mentioned one member, you'd be blown away that he was a, uh, the, one of the one of the head members of the Bilderbergs. Oh, go ahead, Yasser Arafat. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. And that's why, and if people didn't realize, you know, they're not. And I know there was another person on one of the shows here. We got in a little conflict over, but I told her she was blown away. I said, you know what? There will never ever be a Palestinian state. Yeah, yeah. What they're going to do is. And you can see what they're doing because it's doing with the Israelis and Jordanians. They're going to do joint control of Jordan. Uh -huh. The Egyptians are going to take over the Gaza. Okay. And the whole point of Iraq, why they went, they got the United States to get into Iraq, uh -huh. was to put a fear thing onto the Saudis and the Arabs and the Sunnis to make peace with Israel, to force to create an ME union, a Middle East union. Uh huh. Well, which, which will be like the European Union. Right. And then meantime, um, I don't know if you know, they're playing games. Something's really going on with the dollar. They purposely bank yes. up the dollar. Yeah. Oh, they're trying. And to then they're going to try to, they're trying to figure a way to sneak in the arrow, the A-E-R-O. 
currency. And create the uh, North American Union. Exactly. So exactly. you're going to have the North American Union, yeah. the, e, the European Union, the yeah. Middle East Union, and you already have start with because the Chinese, the Japanese, and Southeast Asia, and the Koreans, they're already merging together to form, well, they already have it, so yeah. the, the, the uh, Asian Union, and that's what they're trying to do, create the supposed new world order. Of course, yeah. I think it's going to backfire. I do, too. As they do that, that's when all the stuff with the ETs is going to hit them in the, in the face, and people are going to rise and realize you're full of it. Absolutely. Well, you know, speaking of ETs, um, they do have the technology <clears throat> to uh, present holographic images that are just as real as somebody. You, you would think that you were talking to the person right there. And, uh, you know, more than one person has speculated that um, they would like to, one of the plans that they have on the table is to uh, play a massive uh, holographic space war to supposedly unite the, uh, all the, the world's peoples. Uh, and then this, the one ET that, is, that wins, that assists, supposedly, is going to then be hailed as the uh, savior of humanity and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I don't know what kind of nefarious plans these crazy, insane people have, uh, which include genocide, getting rid of uh, six and a half billion people. But um, I don't think any of it's going to work. And uh, and even if it does, well, then so be it. Then maybe we'll be on another planet anyway. You know, well, we're, we're, uh, well history always people just history always repeats itself, no matter what. It, oh, absolutely. And there's always examples of history. And as much as the Romans were in control, they lost everything. As much as uh, you know, every emperor or Napoleon, Hitler, you know, whatever the British, even the United States, whatever who is trying to take control, um, they end up losing. Absolutely. There's never been a, uh, one single power. When you, know, you can look down the history from the Persians to the Babylonians, every single one of them have fallen. Yeah, yeah, and they fell when they became. They thought they were almighty. Yeah, well, it makes for an interesting uh, play, doesn't it? I mean, the, the one way to look at it, if in case there are world changes that have come up uh, prior to 2012, because Earth has her little evolutionary path too, and we're on her. So, uh, you know, we're hopefully we're we're a little bit more than just fleas on her back. I think we're very loved uh, beings of light, but. Um, I think that uh, some of the bad uh, fleas are going to be shaken off, and uh, you know it's important for us all to remember that these are these are changes that have been talked about for you know centuries by prophets and various other people, and and it's a pr it's a progressive thing. We're moving forward. That out of the uh, out of the ashes comes the phoenix. The ri phoenix rises from the ashes. That'd be a good book for you to write next. <laughs> <laughs> write yeah. about the destruction of the world and how this the small cuttery of uh, people banded together and, and created a new civilization. Well, it's probably that, been done before. I think there's a book called The Dispossessed. That's no. what it reminds me of. <laughs> hey, and what about the Indigo Kids? Have you heard about them too? That's yeah, it. actually, I'm trying to. I'm supposed to have an Indigo Kid coming on to my show either next month or in July I'm trying to get on um, and he's from originally from Puerto Rico and uh -huh. extremely clairvoyant and uh, yeah that's fascinating um, you know and, I, and I'm meeting kids who don't even realize they're indigo uh -huh. you know that yeah. they're like like I look at one there's one kid I know who I'm trying to get on my show maybe this Friday this uh, coming up from coming Friday uh -huh. and uh He's definitely a prodigy, extremely clairvoyant, and aware of all the stuff like what we talk about, the uh, extraterrestrials, free energy, and totally yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And it's so far ahead, but it's where you look at him and you look where I know his father, uh -huh. and his father's a owner or uh, a semi-owner of a, a major company here in Vegas, uh -huh. and he's like, like night and day. He's like so far ahead of his own parents. That's that's really bizarre. And I think I, he did, I think he's an indigo kid, and he doesn't even aware of it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, meeting a lot of yeah, it's sort of funny. And I think 
I think eventually everything's gonna be more like indigo kits. Oh yeah, yeah. and I, I it's like uh, what you're talking about. People, uh, uh, they're gonna be changing, and I I, I think it's, it's like uh, uh, David Wilcock had brought up. Uh, there was a the electrical magnetic field that we're lining up our planets are lining up mm-hmm. is actually affecting our uh, what they call the tertiary effect in our DNA, which is mm-hmm. affecting our own matrix and our own spiritual side, and it's affecting us clairvoyancy but that's also giving us the choice like you had mentioned to the opportunity to uh, embrace um you know the the growth that we're going to have mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. uh you know which is i mean a great i mean this is great great times to be in i mean god you know just think about it it, <laughs> it is it you is. know it's not like living during the time of rome or no you no. know or Nazi Germany or no. whatever. It might be slightly comparable to living in one of the ancient civilizations like Atlantis or Lemuria. It might be. But even then, they say that this, the, the whole planet is slated to rise, where these periods have happened before. Um, apparently, the, the harvest of souls that have actually been able to raise their vibration has been fairly minimal. Um, and this time the whole planet is supposed to be given the opportunity to rise to a higher dimension. So Right, because every 11,000 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we're we're the 11,000 years. We're there, you know. We're there, dude. Yeah, I know. That's I, what this know? is a great, unbelievable, great time to be in. I mean, yeah, I have to remember that sometimes because, you know, when life seems mundane or difficult and it, and it's, you know, on the material levels, it is going to be more difficult. People are going to be shaken up. You know, the old paradigms are being uh, loosened so that we can examine what it is that we really want out of life and move out of the old and into new territory. And that's called change, and, uh, you know, it's not always easy. Yeah, even the Earth is affected by it. Look how many with the earthquakes that are happening, the many earthquakes that are happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Places that you wouldn't think of, like in the middle Midwest now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And in China now. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, look at all the, tur- tur- uh, the tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's just the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's I think, you know, when a baby's being born, you know, we're having going through the labor pain. Yeah, yeah. And who knows, maybe we'll go through a black hole and that will be the birth canal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, they're that uh, particle accelerator at CERN, you know, they're, they're, some physicists think that uh, they're going to accidentally create a black hole. And, uh, Does that mean we get we get we go through the nursing stage again? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, heaven help us! <laughs> Oh, For those who have a oral complex. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't go too far into that one. <laughs> You've had your opportunity. We've all had our opportunity to delve into the into those realms as much as we need to, I'm sure. Although, uh, you know, for us humans, it's never enough, is it? <laughs> but, um, so yeah, there's great changes. Great changes coming. And, it, and a lot of that's going to look like disaster to some people. Yeah, that's that's yeah. It's going to uh, hit in that threshold, and then yeah. look at 2008. And, yeah, was and, two and more it years. Not it even a year. You to look at your spiritual, uh, you know, where you're at spiritually. Uh, I don't think that people are going to be rushing out to churches. Uh, some might. I mean, you're going to have you're going to have everything under the sun. Yeah. Because everybody has their own path, and there is no one size fits all. You know, and I think people are beginning to realize that uh, religions are an option. You know, they're, for the most part, they're an experience and limitation, but for some people, for a few, it's a, it's a way of self-expression. But there is no right way. Well, I think that people are going to find their, the religion is really in your own heart. Exactly. And the, I think that's where they're going to start questioning the being dictated by uh, clerics. Um, yeah, you know this is the way God is. This is the law you I interpret that you're supposed to be follow. Yeah, or this is the way you're supposed to believe in God, and this is what the concept of God is. Yeah, when their people are going to find the concept of God is really the reflection with, within your own heart. Yes, absolutely. You know, absolutely. And, you know and I think, and uh, and that uh, everything is sacred. 
you know, the that once you go within and find that sacred spot within, then you don't have to go to a building that has uh, graven images to express that, because every step you take is sacred. You know, the the unconditional love that you share with your animals and your friends and your family, that's sacred. The food you eat, the, everything is sacred. So I think we're headed in some interesting directions. And um, before, you know, this, boy, this hour's gone by really fast. No, too quick. <laughs> you too quick, isn't it? I mean, it's, it seems like we're just getting started. Yeah. Um, before the hour ends, I want you to mention your books again and where uh, your websites are so people can find you. Okay, you, my um, website for The Heretic, which there is a direct link to also um, when the angels have risen, mm. is uh, www.andrewtheheretic.com. Okay. Or you can always go to directly to When the Angels Have Risen, which is also, there's also a link back to The Heretic, which is www.andrewfetter.com. And, you got, and and if anybody has MySpace, they can always contact me if they have questions or whatever at uh, myspace.com backslash Andrew Fetter, and uh, give me uh, you know send me a message or if you got a question or whatever. Terrific. Well, Andrew, it's been a pleasure talking with you again. I've really enjoyed every second of it, and I wish you the best of luck on your book. And thank you for having me on your show again. Oh, That's wonderful! Been great. Too we'll, quick. We'll, yeah, I know. We'll have to do this again. By that time, you'll have a third book out. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe actually, I'll... I want you on my show because I want to read. I haven't. I just started reading a little bit of your book, and uh, I want to read it, and then I want you on my show. Terrific. <laughs> well, that'd be great because my book is completely stalled now, so I need to get the message out. It's a good thing I'm not worried about money. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time you become a millionaire, then it won't matter. There won't be any money necessary. Uh, exactly. I look forward to the day when we just love each other. Well, Andrew, you're terrific. And uh, thanks again for being here, and thank you, audience, for listening and participating with us. And uh, this is another show, A Fireside Chat, over and out. Good night, everybody.